Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets. And guys, I've been gone for a while. It feels like I haven't talked to you guys all year. I totally haven't been making that joke way too much in my personal life. But anyway, I did have an internet problem, and that is now resolved. We're back to the daily uploads. I do apologize for the delay. But anyway, in today's video, we do have a lot to talk about. I want to talk about this inverse head and shoulders pattern that com completed its formation while I was away and talk about what this may mean for the future of Bitcoin and where Bitcoin may be going over the next couple of weeks as it relates to the 20 uh, daily exponential moving average here on our chart. And I also want to talk about a very, very special day for Bitcoin indeed, because today, January the 3rd, 2019, marks exactly 10 years to the day since the Genesis block of Bitcoin was mined by none other than Satoshi Nakamoto. So we're going to be talking about all that and more in today's video. I think we have a good video lined up today. So if you enjoyed today's video, definitely consider consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Anyway, let's go ahead and get right into it. Bitcoin at the time of recording this video is trading around $3,849. That is $3,849 higher than it was trading 10 years ago. Always got to keep that perspective in mind. Imagine what another 10 years can bring. But today it is trading right around $3,849. We didn't see a whole lot of interesting price action while I was gone. We more or less just saw Bitcoin trade sideways. While I was away, I did see that the market was basically just stagnating, so there wasn't a whole lot to talk about anyway. So you guys didn't miss a whole lot by me not being here. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump onto Coin Market Cap and get on with the crypto market recap. Bitcoin has a market capitalization of around two thirds of a hundred billion dollars. That's an interesting way of putting that. And across all exchanges, Bitcoin is trading at around three thousand nine hundred dollars, with a volume of f around five billion dollars. Uh, Bitcoin actually is doing very well with volume and it's one of the only cryptocurrencies in the green today. Not one of the only, but one of the only in the top 10. An interesting thing did happen while I was gone and that was that Ethereum retook the number two position. It has a daily volume of around $3 billion and it surpassed XRP by about $800, bil uh, excuse me, $800 million. They're both down the exact same today. They're both down by a 38 special and uh, hopefully they'll continue to go up in the future. Both of these cryptocurrencies have been plummeting as well as Bitcoin has over the over the course of the 2018 bear market. I'm hoping that 2019 is going to be better for the cryptocurrency markets than 2018 has been. And I think there's a pretty good chance that it's going to be, but we'll be talking about that more as we get further on into 2019. Anyway, if we sort by change over the last 24 hours here, we're going to see that Chainlink is doing rather well. We can see on the seven day price graphs, it's going a little bit parabolic right now. And the rest of the cryptocurrency market's doing okay. We see some green, but not a whole lot. Probably about 30 cryptos in the green and 70 in the red, perhaps seven uh, 60 in the red and 40 in the green. Nevertheless, we have Digitex Futures leading uh, the losers down here at a negative 21% day for that. Anyway, I do believe that's all we want to cover on Coin Market Cap. So let's go ahead and jump back on into the chart. And this is going to be a shorter video because I do want to talk about one chart formation and about Bitcoin turning 10. But there is something very important that I want to talk about in today's video, even though it's going to be brief. And that has to do with the inverse head and shoulders pattern that I've been talking about forming for quite a while. Even back over here, I was wondering if this was going to form into an inverse head and shoulders pattern because I was not confident that this was a permanent bottom. And then after we came down here and we had uh, this bit of price action right there and right there, I was thinking, you know, this very well could become an inverse head and shoulders pattern. And right around here is when I started talking about the potential of it becoming one on the channel. And so far, it definitely looks like that's what we're developing. A shoulder right there, a head right there, and, an in and another shoulder right there. Now, typically, you'd see a little bit more bullish price action following an inverse head and shoulders pattern completion. But we do have a few more days for Bitcoin to try and do something in response to this inverse head and shoulders pattern. We do have a couple more days for it to start moving up after completing this. And guys, I do want to go ahead and rehash this inverse head and shoulders pattern since I've been gone for a little while. It is a nice looking inverse head and shoulders pattern. I feel like that word is losing all meaning because I've said it so many times, but we see that it has a rather nice neckline right here, but excuse me, a shoulder line right here. Both of the shoulders are, uh, are almost against almost exactly at the same level. We do see that the shoulder line is a little bit slanted, but that's not the end of the world. You see that happen sometimes on inverse head and shoulders patterns, and they still tend to actually play out in a bullish way. One thing that we also see is that there's an uptrend right here. And of course, we can look at volume, but I've done that in a previous video, so we're not going to talk about that right now. Anyway, since we have an inverse head and shoulders pattern here, that would reason uh, you you would be uh, you would be forgiven for thinking that Bitcoin is about to go on some kind of little rally here and continue moving to the upside. And there's a couple reasons why that very well may be happening that we're going to discuss here in a second. But I also want to talk about the overall sentiment of the market because overall the sentiment of the market is still rather bearish, guys. Of course, I'm people call me a permable. I'm not a permable. I just try and look at the bright side of life. Anyway, a Monty Python reference. 
I always try to look at the bright side of life and I also always try to look at the bright side of markets and look at where the market could go up. Now that doesn't blind me to the bearish case. I oftentimes have the bearish case, but I don't always cover on it because I don't necessarily think it's the most logical outcome. But I think it's important that I talk about it here because Bitcoin is still in a very, very bearish state of mind right now. It's in a very, in a very bearish uh, uh, state on the chart right now. We saw the Bitcoin not very long ago broke below $6,000. I think unarguably the most important level of support for all of 2018 was $6,000 and we broke it. That This was a very big day right here, November 14th, when we broke below it. And going into this inverse head and shoulders pattern sure is bullish, but we still have to keep in mind that just because we went into an inverse head and shoulders pattern and we have one or two technical chart formations showing that we should be moving to the upside, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to because the technicals are only as powerful as the number of people that follow them. Keep that in mind because that's really important. I'm going to say that again. The technicals are only as powerful as the number of people that follow them. If you have a technical indicator that's saying that Bitcoin's about to go to $20,000, and that technical indicator has always been right 100% of the time, but no one even looks at that technical indicator and they show it no mind, they care about it, uh, they don't care about it at all. That technical indicator has zero, and I mean completely zero power. Technical indicators are only as powerful as the people that are trading based on them because the f because the, the way that the market moves is not through its own sentience. A market does not uh, live. A market is not alive. A market doesn't move on its own. A market moves based on the way that people trade. As I've said before, a market is the manifestation of the desires of the tr people trading in that market. And the reason I'm saying all this is because we do have some bullish chart formations. We do have some bullish things. Like, for example, the MACD is still very bullish and about to cross the the zero line here on the histogram. We have a lot of things that are looking bullish for Bitcoin, but the sentiment is still rather bearish. And of course, I know a lot of you guys want to be contrarian. I am very often contrarian, but you have to be careful about being contrarian because when everyone's contrarian, then you kind of just ruin the point. And my point here is that just because Bitcoin is looking bullish on the on the chart formation side, we have to be a little careful because the sentiment is still very, very bearish. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at what I talked about at, earlier on in the video. And that is the history of Bitcoin going into an inverse head and shoulders pattern. I want to look at this piece of market history over here from about June to July, where Bitcoin went into this very obvious inverse head and shoulders pattern. I was making videos on this a lot back in uh, back when this happened, and I was talking about this quite a bit. And this was a very, very good looking inverse head and shoulders pattern. It was a very pretty inverse head and shoulders pattern, if you'd like to put it that way. Let's go into the four hour chart so we can get a little more resolution on that inverse H and S. As we can see over here, this was most assuredly an inverse head and shoulders pattern. We did see that it had a rather uh, well-defined shoulder level. It's kind of it's a little bit slanted, but not really. We had an extremely well-defined uh, shoulder line uh, right there at around $6,800. That was an important level of support and resistance for Bitcoin at the time. And Bitcoin went into this inverse head and shoulders pattern, bounced off of around $5,750. The Hoffman line of $100 billion, which we saw in coin market cap, it bounced off of that. And also bounced off the region of $6,000 and we went on a little bit of a rally up to around $8,600 or so. Now, this is what you would expect to happen on Bitcoin again, right? Because Bitcoin has just come down here, made a very nice looking inverse head and shoulders pattern. I'd say the other one looked a little bit more clean than this one. This one's kind of sketchy, but overall it is an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Nonetheless, we do have our neckline right there. We do have our shoulder line right there. So why would this not be as bullish? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, Bitcoin did come down here to a level of support in $3,000, but $3,000 is not as well defined nor as well defended. And it doesn't have the history that $6,000 at the time it did over there. So that's not going to provide us as solid of a bounce. And two, like I said earlier, you have to keep in mind the sentiment of the market. Bitcoin had been crashing and crashing and crashing and crashing and crashing and crashing and crashing here for the last two months before it bottomed out here at this inverse head and shoulders pattern. And the sentiment really did start turning because Bitcoin ran up here for a couple of hours and everybody got very bullish. A lot of people thought that there was a decent chance that a Bitcoin bull run was about to start in these couple of days here. So there was a lot of bullish sentiment here. Right now, I'm not really seeing that in the cryptocurrency market. Now, albeit I was gone for about five days, but I do keep up with it even when I'm not making videos. And I don't see the overwhelming exuberance that we did at the time. So while I do think that this inverse head and shoulders pattern is a good sign and may bring some bullish price action, I'm not going to say that it's going to bring us back to $6,000 or anything. I actually think that is probably going to bring us up a little bit. We may rally a little bit, maybe up to around $4,800 uh, $4, or $5,000. Probably not even that far, to be honest, guys. And then we're probably going to topple back over and continue going uh, sideways or down. Because what I've talked about in plenty of other videos is that Bitcoin is not going into a bull market in the next couple of months, I don't think. Bitcoin's bear market is seemingly pretty much close to being over 
and Bitcoin does seem to be entering what I call the accumulation phase of the three market cycles. The Bitcoin, uh, you have a bull market, then an accumulation phase, then a bear market, and uh, excuse me, a, you have a bull market, a bear market, then an accumulation phase that leads into a new bull market. And that's what it seems like Bitcoin is doing right now is moving into a new accumulation phase, which it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense for Bitcoin to go on a massive rally right now since it is just getting into that phase. Anyway, one thing that I was kind of wor uh, wondering if would happen that was a weird way of putting that. One thing I was kind of curious about was when Bitcoin turned 10 years old on today, January the 3rd, 2019, whether or not Bitcoin would have a massive spike in price action from people that were very exuberant about Bitcoin at turning 10, buying some Bitcoin. And that doesn't seem to be happening because Bitcoin is down by 1.34% today. It's a rather normal day, but it is nevertheless something I wanted to talk about. You guys probably remember back in October, a lot of people were talking about Bitcoin turning 10. And a lot of people were talking about Bitcoin turning 10 because that was the day that Bitcoin's white paper was published. But I like to use January the 3rd, 2019, or January the 3rd, whatever year, as the as the anniversary for Bitcoin, because that was the day that Bitcoin was actually mined for for the first time. Now, of course, the white paper being created was a very important thing, but I'd like to say that Bitcoin was born on January the 3rd, 2019, because that's when Bitcoin first came into existence. I mean, you could I mean, do you say a baby was born when it was conceived or when it was born? I'd like to say when it was born and Bitcoin was most surely born 10 years ago today. And that's a very, very awesome thing to see that Bitcoin has come this far in just 10 years, guys. I came here on the uh, uh, Wikipedia page to show you guys a little bit about the Genesis block that was mined 10 years ago today. We're going to go ahead and read from this. Uh, the Genesis block, the, uh, a Genesis block is the first block of a blockchain. You guys probably hear this word thrown around a lot coming out of other cryptocurrencies like, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to name any, but a lot of these cryptocurrencies down here, uh, you, the newer ones, uh, you hear a lot of conversation about Genesis blocks. That would be the first block in the blockchain because, of course, if you go back in time on any blockchain, you're going to run out of blocks and eventually you'll run into the Genesis block. Modern versions of Bitcoin number it as block zero, though in earlier versions it was counted as block one. The Genesis block is almost always hard-coded into software applications that use its blockchain. It is a special case that does not reference a previous block because all other blocks do. And for Bitcoin and almost all other derivatives and, and all, almost all of its derivatives, it produces an unspendable subsidy. And if you guys aren't in, if you guys aren't familiar with the programming of Bitcoin, then you're probably not going to be able to read this. But this is what the main uh, the, the main network Genesis block looked like for Bitcoin, and it contained a very interesting little piece, uh, a little uh, comment here, if you will, by Satoshi Nakamoto that said the Times 03 January 2009 Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks, and that was a reference to some things that were going on having to do with the 2008 and 9 financial crisis at the time, which led some people to believe, and as this says that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto may have, in fa may have in fact lived in the United Kingdom. Anyway, like I said, this did happen 10 years ago, and of course, Bitcoin's block reward is much lower now, but at the time, there was a block reward of 50 Bitcoin. So on this day, 10 years ago, 50 Bitcoin first came into existence. Now there are over 17 million and counting. Anyway, definitely a very interesting day indeed. I'm very happy to see that Bitcoin has turned 10 because Bitcoin has come a very long way in just 10 years, guys. A lot of us have been in the market for less than two years. I've been in the market for almost two years now. And it's a very interesting market, guys. Bitcoin's an awesome thing. I, I, I can't express in words how much I love this community and how much I'm so proud of this community, if you guys get that reference. Uh, I, I really like Bitcoin. I really like the community that's formed around and I really like what Bitcoin is trying to do. And I really think that Bitcoin does have the capacity to do what it is set out to do. And that is to replace banks and to revolutionize the current financial system for the better so that everybody can actually participate in it and not be screwed over by the big banks and hopefully not have a bunch of recessions be caused in the future from the banks screwing up anymore. Anyway, I'm not going to get into all of that today, but I did want to go and wish Bitcoin a happy birthday. Let's sing Bitcoin happy birthday. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to sing that on video. I don't really want to make myself look like that much of a fool. Anyway, guys, for Bitcoin's 10th birthday, I am going to be running a uh, coupon code on the course. If you type in Bitcoin 10 at checkout for the for the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy for the next 36 hours or so, then you will be getting 20% off on the course. I wanted to run a New Year's special for the course, but of course... I was not here because my internet was messed up. I am moving rather soon, so that won't be an issue anymore. And I'll also be able to do live streams, so look forward to that, guys. But if you are interested in learning how to do cryptocurrency technical analysis, everything I just did in this video, I cover how to do in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, guys. One thing I always tell people is that the first thing that you should be investing in when you're moving into any market or moving into any job, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're trying to make money, don't invest in cryptocurrency. Don't invest in anything other than yourself because you have the highest return on investment. 
and that is why I created the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. Before I start creating a bunch of things telling you what to what cryptocurrency to buy or anything, I think the most important thing that you can do is uh, teach yourself. And if you guys learn one lesson from the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy that makes you 10% on a trade that has a couple thousand dollars in it, then you're going to make back the money you spent on CT2A and you'll also be supporting yours truly. So if you guys are interested in checking out what we have to offer, check the link in the description down below. Anyway, guys, I am going to be doing daily uploads. That has never changed. I was gone for about a week because I was on vacation and I've been gone for the last five days because my internet was out, but I'm pretty sure that's never going to happen again. Here's to hoping. Anyway, guys, we are back to the daily grind and I will be seeing you guys in the next video. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.